Hey guys, um, so in this video, I just wanted to demonstrate uh, the method that I use to automate um, the modeling of survey utilities inside 12D. Um, so the reason why I set this up is because on some of the projects that we work on, the utility survey information might only come in 3D line strings. Um, it doesn't come in like a, a 3D solid mesh. So we can't, it's a bit, a bit difficult in terms of coordination. Like if you want to run clash detection, um, it can't be done very easily with that. So um, we, we you know go through and, and basically use that line where I can convert it into a mesh. So um, in 12D, normally I, I, what I use is a combination of um, custom macros and chains uh, to do this for me. So you can basically get the whole thing done in one click. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate that in this video. So I'll just go through, I'll just got my blank model open here. Um, and I'm just going to open up um, a chain that I have inside this project. Um, this one here. Um, so normally yeah, I would just come in and, and run it and then it would just um, you know run run all these steps uh, all in one hit. Um, but for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just going to um, step through them sort of one by one and explain what's happening. Um, so yeah, the first thing that it's going to do um, is create a view, um, so which happens there. Um, and then this next step, it just adds all the models to that view. Um, we don't have anything at the moment, um, so nothing goes into it. But if there was something in the model, it would push it to that. Um, and then it deletes everything from the view. Um, so then our, our model is empty again, and it's like a, a fresh slate, basically. Um, and then, yeah, the next step, we'll just read in our data. So I'll hit execute on that. It's going to take a few moments because it's a lot of data inside of it, as you can probably imagine. So just wait for that. OK, so that data has finished reading now. Uh, so we're just going to add it. This next one's going to add all the models to this view now. So I'll just hit execute on that. Um, the zooming set. So that's our data there. But sometimes, like what happens is you get like some row data that comes in zero zero. Um, so I just got these two uh, things here to clean that up a bit. Um, this is basically creates a box around the data and deletes anything outside of it. Um, and then even even though I did that off afterwards, I still found there was another model left over, which is like um, zero. Um, so I just put a line in there to delete that model as well. So just wait for that to finish. OK, that's good. Um, so that dot is still there. That's the zero data. So I'm just going to hit execute on that one. Yep. OK, so now if I do zoom extents, that's all our um, survey data that we have. Um, so that's come in well. So yeah, it's just made up of like, you know, pits, conduits, culverts. Um, sometimes we have light poles and all that. Um, yeah, so this is our string data here. Um, so the next step that's going to do is going to run a macro that I've created. So this is to set all the attributes to it. Um, so if I was to do an F8, on one of these strings, for example, we'll see that there's nothing in it. Um, but what we do have, the information that's available, um, is that we have the name. Um, so, you know, this example, this is like 150 diameter, 80 diameter. Um, you know, we know it's as built information or CSR. Um, and, you know, there's other stuff like, you know, there's culverts, uh, there's pits, um, pits, sorry, pit. Um, and then we also have like redundant stuff as well. So it'll pick it up as being redundant. Um, so when I run this macro, you're going to see that um, it's going to um, it's going to add attributes based on that. It, it basically looks for the keywords in the name and adds attributes based on that. Um, so I'll show you that in a moment. Um, I guess just one thing I want to highlight before I run the macro was um, just to show one of the features. Um, so one of the issues that I was encountering when doing the pits um, was that well there's a couple there's a couple problems but I'll show you the first one you see these pits here how they're circles see this type type of circle so I, I don't know if I don't know if it's all 12d models or just mine the, the version that I'm using but um, yeah that the pits won't form on these on these circles they have to be like a super string or whatever um, so what one of the things that the macros Previously, I guess what I had to do was go through and add a point to these. Like I had, I had a script that ran in Auto, AutoCAD that did that. Um, but there, there was a few issues, I guess, surrounding that as well. Um, so I created in, inside 12D one of them. What what it does is basically, um, if it finds that it's a pit and that it's a type circle, um, it'll create a point and put it in the middle and copy all the all the properties like the color, the um, the X Y Z coordinates, um, and it also grabs the um, the radius of that and applies it as a diameter value. Um, so you see here we have the radius is 210. So it should create a point with a diameter of 410 millimeters or meters. Um, so yeah, I'll run that now and we'll see that in action. Execute. Um, it's just asking me for which view to run it on. So I'm going to run it on 
Let's move my chain a bit. I'll leave this open so we can see the point form as well, so I don't lose it. So I'm just going to run it on this all models view. Uh, hit enter. You can probably just see a flash. Oh, sorry. It creates all these views. So basically what happened is it um, just to keep all the projects consistent, um, I got it to create views. Like, so every time it'll run these views. Um, and then what it does, yeah, it basically just has the, the all the, it creates a pipe and pit import, has all the models in it. Um, it has the as-built pits, like the CSR pits, um, and, and the CSR as-built pipes. And then it has the leftover, like the existing pipes and pits as well. And then it has, you know, the pits that all in one plan and the pipes all in one plan and, and that sort of thing. Um, so you see here, this is just all pit models. Um, this one will have all the pits, but not the as-built stuff, the CSR. Um, so yeah, it breaks it up like that and then we can create separate models from it. Um, so yeah, now if I was to do an F8 on one of these strings, let's grab that one. I'll just find another one that has it. I right, so see this one has um, PVC 100, so 100 diameter. So now if I look at this, it has all these attributes attached to it. So it has a diameter of 0 0.1 meters. Um, it looks for justification as well. So if it has like a flag, like, um, let's quickly bring up a new view. Uh, so if in the naming, if it has like inv, invert thing, let's have a look here. So I'll grab one of these ones. So see it says uh, non justification true now. Um, and the justification is set to invert. And then it has like, yeah, the yellow stuff, a little bit extra information on um, the status is operational. Um, if I bring in, you know, before I should have had some redundant stuff. So if I bring in redundant, so I'll grab some of this. And we see the status has changed to redundant now. So we can use that to filter it out inside of like, in our coronation models, we can highlight it or remove it from the scene by using th these attributes. Um, so that's done. Also, you know, things like, uh, let's just have a look at the col sorry, the culvert. Um, that has different attributes as well. Um, so you can see it's type uh, culvert and has size one, size two to help with the modeling. Um, and then, yeah, sorry, so back to that view, if I can find it again, it must be that one there. Uh, so we can now see, see it's got a point now in the middle of the circle. Um, so that point is going to be used to model a pit on. So if I just pick that point. So you see here our, uh, our radius is 210, so it should have a diameter of 420. Uh, so we'll just pick this as an attribute. Pick the point. Yeah, see, there it is there. So 420. Um, it says millimeter, but it should be meter, I guess. Um, and then depth has a depth as one, as one meter. Um, and yeah, same sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that's that. That's that's what that does. Um, it does all that work for me, which I used to have to do manually. Um, oh yeah, so the next one that uh, I had another issue with the pits where on the square pits, like the polygons, um, one of the things that would happen if we toggle our vertices on, uh, I just got to see if I can find, it doesn't, it's not on all of them, but it does happen on a lot of them. Um, okay, here. So see, see these three pits here. So you see how it has like a fifth, it's, it should be four vertices, but it has a fifth point. So if you do an F2 on it, you'll see that it has five points when it should only have four. Um, so because of that, the tri meshes weren't forming on these. Um, so what I had to do previously was go through and manually delete these points, which obviously took a long time because there's so many pits. Um, so that's why I created a, uh, another macro, which takes care of that. Um, and basically what it does, it goes through and compares the, it loops through all the points and compares them. And if it finds that, um, two of the points have the same X, Y coordinate, then it'll delete one and, um, and close the pit again. So let me just run that and you'll see that these points will disappear. So we'll just point, at, I'll do my pits all of you because that has all the pits anyway. Pits all, um, hit enter on that. And then if I just do... A redraw. Now it's gone. See the fifth point's gone now, and then we are, we're back to four points, which is what we want. So, yeah, I did that. Sometimes I run that like a few times just to be sure, because some of them have like multiple duplicates. But I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, and then yeah, so the next part, sort of the almost the final piece, is running the mapping file that I created to model. Uh, well, not the pits, but uh, to model the pipes. Um. So what's this? Yeah, this one here. That's just that uh, mapping file here. So I'll just bring up my mapping file quickly to show what it looks like. Um, create edit. And it's just in our user lib. Read that. Go to pipe, string. And then, yeah, so we've got all these, all these different conditions set up here. Um, so it's basically just looking through um, 
so for these attributes key so if it finds these attributes like say non size true non justification true justification invert um then it's going to justify the pipe to be an invert um it's going to look for that diameter attribute um and then yeah so that's that's what it does if it doesn't have a diameter attribute i, I just default it in this example for um it'll just default at the 0 0.15 diameter um just so it has something um and then and this is yeah this is for the culverts as well so if it finds that it's type culvert like we saw before no justification false or true then it has these different conditions so that that covers all the conditions um so that's that and then i'll finish that so i'm just gonna run that now uh it's just in the pipes the pipes import so this is bring up the pipes import so we can see the strings here now he convert and now they're all pipes so that's the 3d modeling complete of those of the pipes uh so we just bring up a perspective view just to show how it looks that it actually worked um let's just bring all these i'll just add everything yeah um oh yeah so here's a little bit of a cluster of pipes we can look at yeah so you can see that it's modeled all these pipes as solids now and then you can see the the, the different the different sizes in them so this will be other than that's probably 150 this one's a 150 these ones will probably be yeah 100 so you can see they're a bit smaller visually uh this one looks like a larger one yeah 450 so yeah so that all worked um we can also see um if we add the culverts in just quickly oops culvert add all these let's just zoom into somewhere where it has a few yeah, so you can see it's modeled all the culver culverts for me now as well. So see, those are all done. Um, all defined as boxes, which is good. So that worked. Um, and then, yeah, so we'll just finish on that. Um, so yeah, that's all the pipes and culverts and all that done. Um, the next part in the chain is just the pit. Uh, the pit. So I'll just preview that. Um, and we'll just hit, I guess, process. It should have the right views in there, I assume. Process. So you see in the... So that's just running now. So that's just looking for those. When I added those um, attributes for the pits, it's looking for those ones. So that depth meter, and then um, when it finishes, I'll just show the circular one as well. So the custom pits are those square ones. And then, I don't know what that is. Um, and then, yeah, these circular ones are... Uh, I'm um, looking for the diameter and the and the depth. Uh, oh, I made a copy. Okay. Um, so that should be all the pits done, I think. I'll just bring that into the view. At all, yes, yeah, so that's all the pits there. So let me zoom right in. I'm going to see that these are now solids. So you can see they're all solids now. In one click, it's all done. Um, and yeah, so at, at the moment, these are just defaulting to um, one meter depth, I think. So if I just grab one of the strings, you yeah, see it just has the depth. It, it, everything gets one meter because unless there's data available, um, yeah, it, it's sort of difficult. Um, like you, you could set it up so it looks at maybe like, you know, the, the pipe levels maybe and do it that way. That that could be done um, with a bit of code. Um, but yeah, or, or if there's a bit of text that tells you, that could be done. But yeah, so just for now, I just do one meter or whatever um, across everything. Um, and then if there's any like areas where our design's going through, you, you might just go through and like, you know, I might set it up, fix it manually and change it to three and then rerun it. Um, so that's that. That's all done. Um, and then, yeah. Oh, sorry, I should have left the pit in there. Um, let's bring some of these in. Okay. So this next one on the chain... Uh, basically all this one's doing is it's giving the if you do an f2 on this mesh now you see how the name's coming up as mesh it's not using the string name um so what this does this is just an attribute manipulator file i'm um, inside 12d so this is just going to look for the string name uh the model name and change it to the string name so if i execute that yeah so it's that See, now, now the name's changed to the model name. So I just do that because when I export it later using mapping file and template, um, I don't want to have to run it twice, like one looking for the model name, one looking for the string name. So uh, I just want to do everything one hit. So that's what that does. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So the, the next part of the chains, these just most projects I do it this way. I, I create um, a combined model 
instead of like you know sharing out you know 300 models whatever it is um i just combine everything into one so i break the data up there might be one for overheads one for pipes one for pits one for light poles whatever you know um and then i just share those out uh those files out to the other teams um basically just looks for you know the, the view and then it pushes it to a combined model that's all it does and that's the one that gets shared to everyone else and yeah so i guess that's um all i wanted to show in this video thanks